Watch and ecosystems, known as the kidney of the earth, provide critical ecosystem services such as flood attenuation, wildlife habitat provision, and carbon sinks. However, in the age of climate change, more than 80,000 acres of wetlands are being lost annually due to the increasing temperature and the rising sea levels. Massive wetland degradation can lead to a reduction in carbon sequestration and ultimately lead to wetlands being converted into net carbon sources. However, the environmental factors driving the wetland carbon fluxes and the current status of wetland carbon emissions remain unclear. Such knowledge is critical for wetland management and the protections. To fill this gap, in this study, I used the machine learning techniques and the MRF flux data to identify the driving forces of wetland carbon fluxes and map their spatial patterns over the entire southeastern U.S. United States is rich in wetlands, especially the southeastern U.S. Wetlands in the southeast account for nearly 50% of the total wetland areas in the contaminous U.S. Over the study area, there are a total of 13 American flux sites that measure carbon fluxes and associated environmental variables. So, to answer the first question, what environmental factors driving the wetland carbon fluxes in the southeastern United States? A random forest regression model was employed to perform the input-output mapping between the predictors and the response variable. Predictors include incoming shortwave radiation, air temperature, soil temperature, wind speed, vapor pressure deficit, soil water content, water table depth, water table depth difference, site, months, and the season. The response variable is the net ecosystem exchange of carbon, which can be ref referred to as NEE for short. All predictors and the response variable come from American flux measurements. After a series of hyperparameter tuning, I finally got a random forest regression model with an accuracy of 0.68. Although the accuracy is not very high, it's already comparable to the results of other similar published studies. The model also ranks the relative importance of each predictor with incoming short-wave radiation, soil temperature, and water table depths being the top three important variables on NEE. With the trained uh, random forest regression model, I was able to map the NEE over the entire southeastern U.S. To answer the second question, what is the status of wetland carbon emissions? Uh, wetlands carbon sinks or sources? The estimation map shows that NEE values are all negative, which means that wetland ecosystems in the southeastern U.S uptake carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, i.e. act as carbon sinks. And also, higher net carbon dioxide uptake was found along the coastal areas and around the Mississippi Delta, where more wetlands are located. Although the overall southeastern U.S. act as carbon sinks, NEE from some wetland grids was detected to have significantly increasing trend. It suggests that they may convert to carbon sources in the near future in response to climate change. Therefore, wetland protection and the conservation actions are urgently needed to reverse this trend. To conclude, in this study, a random forest regression model was developed to estimate wetland carbon dioxide emissions over the southeastern U.S. based on American flux NEE measurements and associated environmental variables. The developed random forest regression model fitted well with an accuracy of 0.68. The wetland NEE is found to be most sensitive to variations in incoming shortwave radiation, soil temperature, and water table depths. And the mapped NEE over the entire southeastern U.S. ranges from minus 2.39 to 0 micromore carbon dioxide per meter square per second. Negative NEE values indicate the southeast U.S. wetland ecosystem act as carbon sinks. However, NEE from some wetland grades significantly increased with time, 
which require our actions to reverse this trend.